second sack of the year, second sack of the night for the Sooners. Take a look at the All-State camera. Watch Texas Tech. They try and cross shallow in front of the linebackers, but they're having none of it. The secondary covering again downfield. Once more, Cliff Kingsbury can't get his short targets. Nowhere to go with the ball. Dusty Dvorak, number 94, with the sack. Once again, we want to thank All-State for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You are in good hands with All-State. Second down and long. They try the reverse. Welker, running room, crosses the 35, takes a shot as he gets up to about the 47-yard line. Brandon Everidge, the junior out of Granger, Texas, on the stop. Here's an update with Washington, Washington State with EJ. And Ron Washington State has now scored 17 unanswered points. Jason Gesser to the air, 67 yards to Sammy Moore. That is 23 straight games with at least one touchdown pass for Gesser, rated number six in the nation. They're up by 10. Back to you. Just cooking it right now in Pullman. <laughs> it's not snowing there. Third down and three for Texas Tech. Kingsbury seeing the pocket collapse. The boys won. Into the flat, incomplete, and again, the Sooner defense holds. And on second down, they ran a play that we talked about before. A play that uses their speed against them on this play. Watch Oklahoma in their coverage. What they have is a zone, four guys. Two guys playing the hard corner, two guys playing the deep halves. Nowhere to go with the ball because they have linebackers that can cover the underneath route. That speed is essential. And here's Texas Tech with the first big play of the game or the first big move going for it on fourth down in their own territory. Well, they're 69% on the year. They've tried it 35 times. They've made 24. And they will come after him here. Kingsbury will burn the second time out, trying to draw Oklahoma off sides. They didn't buy it. Mike Leach trying to pull the rabbit out of his head. 11.46 left in the half. His team trails. Johnson presented by Gatorade at 7 o'clock, followed by exclusive NBA coverage. In game one, the hottest team in the NBA, the Dallas Mavericks, take on the Pacers of Indiana. And in game two, it's the Nets of New Jersey traveling to play the L.A. Clippers. And, of course, the evening wraps up with inside the NBA, presented by Hyundai. Now, they first had the little swinging gate set up, but instead they go to him and kick it away. And Texas Tech bench had the duck. That was coming right at him. And again, the Sooners with excellent field position. 12 yards on the kick. Big play Saturday is presented by... I'm joined by Charles Davis, Craig Sager, Aaron Andrews. I'm Ron Thulin. The Oklahoma Sooners and Nate Hibble's offense have been effective thus far tonight. 16 to nothing. The winner plays the Big 12 championship game December, December 7th. The Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas against the Buffaloes of Colorado. Griffin keeps the feet moving again. And again, Oklahoma picking up big chunks of yardage on first down. How about that? December 7th, the Buffs, they would love a rematch with the Oklahoma Sooners. They discussed that no sooner than the <laughs> clock hit zero here in Norman well, earlier this it. year. Felt as if they caused many of the mistakes that beat them that were their own. They didn't feel as if Oklahoma took it to them. Bob Stoop says you don't get mulligans in this league, but guess what? They just might. <laughs> and That's if right. so, it will be a heck of a game. Second down and six. Nibble into the flat up to the 50 down to the 49 yard line. Pass is complete to Will Peoples. Well, let's take a look at this week's Jack Daniels original hard cola flashback, and it is the Buffs against the Sooners. Nibble found Mark Clayton for a 12 yard touchdown run, and Oklahoma led 27 to 3. Chris Brown, the nation's leading rusher, did get over 100 yards in the game, but the key in this game, mistakes. The Sooners blocked the field goal. Colorado had four turnovers, and they win it by 16. Eddie Lehman, nice job. That's our Jack Daniels flashback. And those four turnovers are exactly what Gary Barnett and his team pointed to, saying we shot ourselves in the foot. 
Sooners keeping it on the ground with Keywan Jones. Now, I was looking at Keywan Jones running the football, the redshirt freshman. Yes, he's an excellent running back, but more importantly, he has allowed Quentin Griffin to keep fresh legs this late in the season. And not just because he comes in and runs the football and takes some carries from Quentin Griffin. They also use Keywan Jones more in pass protection. So that means Quentin Griffin isn't having to get leverage against 240 and 250 pound guys trying to rush the passer. As we see Ricky Saylor, the starting corner for Texas Tech go out and I see a hand, see the hand yeah. underneath his pads, oftentimes just trying to stabilize a shoulder. You know, yeah, again, Lawrence, I shouldn't be trying to play doctor here. Let's hope he's okay. Well, Lawrence Flugent's already out. He went to the locker room. They were probably going to retape the ankle. We had Brandon Everidge of Oklahoma. They popped his shoulder back in. He came back in the lineup. Now we have Ricky Saylor, the senior from Tampa. See how he's reaching underneath there? Yep. Trying to make sure that the joint's stable. Now the Sooners on first and 10. On the ground with Quentin Griffin. Jeremy Woods coming up from that linebacker spot, the sophomore out of Andrews, Texas. Let's see if we can see how Sailor got hurt. There's Ricky Sailor, number 21, right there. Let's see what happens at the end of the play as he goes for the tackle. And as he comes down, Kiwan Jones lands on top mm -hmm. of his head and shoulder area. Well, he's standing up now, which is a good sign, showing some mobility with the arm. Let's hope they just had a, a temporary stinger or something, and he's going to be back out there in a couple of plays. Sooners on second and six. This time they go for the left side. Griffin with a stiff arm. Able to get close to the 30-yard line. And it'll be another Oklahoma first down. How about that? Seven straight 100-plus games for Quentin Griffin. And it's not even halftime. Already got a full full day's work in already. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying he deserves his letter. And, and, and not only that, his running has set them up with the ability to throw the ball on first down mm -hmm. because they feel as if they can come back and get two good running plays in after that. Don't be surprised the Oklahoma take a shot downfield now. Wins in their favor as his field position. Well, they go to a good thing again. They keep it out of the ground, scampering out of bounds, and it's Quentin Griffin again. Then again, why throw? Why throw? <laughs> but you know, let's think about this OU running game. Three years ago, they were more like Texas Tech's offense. Now, because of a physical offensive line, they've evolved into more of a complete football team. Yeah, and look at look at the guys leading out front. That's number 70, Kelvin Shashan. And he just blots out <laughs> the sun as he gets to the corner. Nice job by number 95, Rodney McKinney, running the play from down from behind. But as you see how they've changed yeah. in just three years' time as the run now predominant as opposed to the pass. Second down and short yard, second and one. Jones breaks over the right side, gets inside the 15. Boy, they just keep chewing up the yardage on this Texas Tech defense. And Greg McMack is scratching his head because this is not the way they've played recently. No, it's not. And what's happening now is you're seeing the fruits of the labor that Oklahoma put in beginning in spring practice where they had to get a new attitude with their offensive linemen who were used to pass blocking all the time. They got to get guys firing out and hitting people in order to run the football. Mm -hmm. That came with the addition of Kevin Wilson as the new run game coordinator and offensive line coach from Northwestern. And his guys relish hitting people now. Ewan Jones straight ahead, not much going on there. Rodney McKinney senior out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who's really stepped up recently, is in on the stop. Don't forget, we haven't even mentioned Ronaldo Works. I mean, they've got this one, two, three punch in the backfield. And then Works weighs over 200 pounds, and he's the scat back. <laughs> Kiwan yeah. Jones doesn't even weigh 190, yeah. and he's the hammer. <laughs> That's right. Well, a little, we, little bit of a role reversal, but it works very well. You see, Ronaldo works. Did we run into him yesterday? Yes, Grabbed we, a little bit of lunch. He was he was throwing down some food across the street with us. Very nice young man. Griffin around the left side. He can see the goal post, but he'll come up five yards short. <laughs> well, one of the things that Kiwan Jones has done, he's been able to give Quentin Griffin a little bit of rest, and he's taken some hits for him. He doesn't mind it. When I get in there, when it comes short yardage time, he has a lot of confidence in me that I'm going to get the first down or, you know, get it in the touchdown. So we just, you know, we just work hard on, you know, on doing what we have to do as, you know, backup running backs just to, to help Q out a lot, knowing that, you know, defense is going to be keying on him. And when we get our opportunity to get in there to, you know, to try to make big plays. 
Well, Oklahoma's smelling a little blood right now because facing third down and two from the six, they're going to call the timeout and talk about it. And what I found interesting about this drive is that they had the opportunity, wind at their back, excellent field position, were running the ball well to put the ball in the air and go for the quick strike. But you see Kevin Wilson, you just saw him pop out there. Wes Sims, number 60, is blocking him out. He's the offensive line coach and the run game coordinator came from Northwestern and gave this team the attitude that they have.